relax. Again, you might have to do some mining. And the ice axe T-slot is just like the ski T-slot. Get it down there. When you do these, you want to make sure that your back is undercut so that when you put your axe in, it gets sucked down. Do you have a sling or something handy? A little girth hitch is fine. You just have to be careful when you seat these things that they're level and flat. There you go. Pretty straightforward anchor. Fern and really hard snow, glacial snow in the summer. You don't have to go too deep to dig one of these. And like this is a, you know, I would hang two people off this, no problem. What? If, if the snow was good. One thing about this is your little uh, Gravel aluminum axes with the aluminum heads, you know, they make great tent pegs. But that's about it. <laughs> So what what are your real axe. I, I noticed the propensity for not digging very deep. You know, most people don't dig deep enough and we can blow the anchor out by just testing it. Yeah. Um so what kind of guidelines could you give to people to to figure out how deep depending upon the condition of the snow and whatnot? I I personally um, depends I use how hard I have to dig as a measure. Oh. Right? So if sure. I've got a chip and chip with the ads. Yeah. I know that I'm not going to blow my anchor out. Like if I've got to literally chip away with this thing yep. to try and make a trench to get in there, I might go like <laughs> that deep. Okay. Right? But I but I make a very very good point of of undercutting. Okay, because that that will I probably more anchors fail that way. Okay. Right. Than sure. Actually, um, the whole thing blowing up. Yeah. You know, like you can make. I've I've actually done it. It takes a while. You can make a T slot in almost glacial ice, and like you can hang 10 people off of one of those things. So, Cliff, what's your rule for how deep for skis? Uh, for skis? Yeah. Uh, all depends on the snow. Yeah. So if you've got really soft, unconsolidated snow, you might have to go a meter, a meter and a half. Yeah. Really hard, firm snow. Maybe half a meter is all you need to do. Okay. So you kind of have to play by ear with the type of snow you have. Okay. Great. Great. Um, you can tie them in the middle. What you want to try and avoid is skis doing a lot of this. Okay. If you have brakes on your skis, of course, well to keep them. Or you can take a strap and put it on the top or the bottom. Um, two schools of thought on padding this area. So you take a glove, pat it, so your sling's not going to get sawed by your sharp edges. Okay. I think padding is good if you think your ski is going to seesaw a lot. Okay. But if you're pretty confident that they'll stay put, or if you have a strap, you wouldn't worry about the padding. So I sort of place my skis here and figure out where the middle is going to be. Get them out of the way. You always want to put your set it up so your anchor is coming through the middle of your binding. Get it right in the middle of the ski, and it ensures that the uh, your sling or your quarter or whatever is not going to take off. You can use a sling or a cordlet, whatever you want to do. Um, you find that you're going to need a bit of room to get away from the anchor here. That's where the cordlet's coming nice. So you have about two and a half meters. So, knot. What do I want to tie this with? Nice clean knot is a fisherman's. Is a single fisherman strong enough? Double. Yeah, you can use a double. Single is strong enough. Good. Oh, yeah. Okay. Earth hitch it is. It's simple. Yeah. Probably could have I had to. If I lost my other arm. Yeah. 
Okay, so at this point, this was a real situation, could I use this for two people? Yeah, for sure. I feel, feel pretty confident. 